16 through 23 by Reverend Stephen Lindsay, student. Prayer by Minister Antonio Allen, student. Introduction of speaker, Dr. Charles Oliver, Jr., faculty. Solo by Ms. Jocelyn Harvey, student. Guest lecture, Reverend James Drew, Jr., pastor of Peace and Fellowship Community Church of Kansas City, Kansas. Then we'll have remarks by Dr. Thad Jones, President of Western Bible College, Dr. Sandra Jones, Dean of Academics, Western Baptist Bible College, and Dr. Robert Bainer, President Emeritus, Western Baptist Western Bible College. Then we'll have a benediction by Reverend James Drew Jr. Amen. 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 For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. Mm -hmm. We would know, therefore, these things mean. For the Athenians were strange, which uh, and strangers which were there spent their time in uh, knowing else. But other things, other 
but either to tell or to hear these new things. Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, yeah. Ye men of Athens, perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. For as I passed, and behold, it, uh, 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 take your time. <laughs> devotion, I found an altar of inscribed with an inscription to the unknown God, to whom therefore ye are ignorant worship. Him declare I unto you. Amen. 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 Let's prepare our hearts and our minds to pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening, God. First of all, Father, saying thank you, God. God, we thank you, God, for blessing us with another day, God. Mm -hmm. We thank you, God, for your love and for your mercy, God. Father, we thank you, God, for your son, Jesus Christ, Father, yeah, yeah. who came, died, and was resurrected, Father, that we may have eternal life, Father. Father, we're thankful, Father, for the fellowship that we have, Father. We thank for your spirit-filled teachers and instructors that we have here at Western Baptist Bible College, Father. Yes, Lord. And we're thankful for the passion that they have, Father, yes. in doing what they do. Father, we only ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to descend upon this congregation this evening, Father. Yes, Lord. That we all may be edified by the words coming from your preaching, Father. Hallelujah. Father, we ask right now that you fill him with the Holy Spirit, Father, that the yes. words of wisdom come out of him, Father, that belongs to you, God. Yes, Father, we ask you condition us, Father, condition our hearts and our lives, Father, that we may be receptive to the word mm -hmm. that comes from the preaching, Father. Yes. Father, we thank you and we praise you and we honor you, Father, in all that we do and all that we say, God. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Lord. These things I humbly pray in your son, Jesus Christ. Lord. Jesus, Lord. Amen. 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 Good evening. Good evening. It is my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce to you tonight our lecture on Christian education. Mm -hmm. I am blessed to know such a man, and I am blessed to know the importance of Christian education. Yes. It is not circular education. Mm -hmm. It is Christian education. Yeah, yeah, That's right. right. That it can only come to us from the fulfillment and the power yes, of the Holy Spirit. Yes. yes. And so we thank you. Lord, for this great preacher who I'm about to introduce to you all. I met him uh, a few years back through uh, mutual friends. But as I have been in the Carl Valley District, I have observed him. Mm -hmm. I see what his accolades said and what his bio talks about him. But I wanted to just introduce him and what I have observed He's a quiet spirit man. Amen. Right. Amen. He loves God. Amen. He's not looking for any vain glory. All right. He's not one that would have to be put out on the spotlight to, to be recognized. And he loves, as his bio says, he loves people. Amen. And notice that he shows himself to be a friend. Mm -hmm. As the scripture says, if we're going to be a friend, we must first show ourselves friendly. Amen. And he has done that. He has shown me friendliness, and, mm -hmm. and so I appreciate him for that. When a task was given to me to find uh, our lecture speaker, uh, I couldn't think anybody else but him. Mm -hmm. When I asked him to do it, he said, well, why me? <laughs> yeah, well. I wanted to say, why not? Yeah, that's right. You fit all the criteria yeah, yeah. uh, to do this. And so uh, if we be a prayerful congregation tonight, and if you don't know, you need to ask somebody. We are a congregation <laughs> right now. Amen. Amen. Gathered and under the umbrella and the unction of the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. yes. If we be a praying church yes. tonight, yes. Reverend 
James Drew Jr. Mm -hmm. will bring us a word from the Lord Amen. on Christian education. So without further ado, I would like to present this song and introduce the others. The Reverend James Drew Jr. Let's receive him by the elevation of our right hands. Amen. Brother Drew. Brother Drew. Bring us the word. Bring us the word. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. There's a sure Jesus is more. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I'm an heir of salvation. Question, why me? <laughs> but then why not me? Amen. Amen. I'm so honored and grateful to be here. I brought my sidekick with me. My wife is at home with her mother taking care of her. So I grabbed the number two sidekick, which is my mother, Miss mm -hmm. Smitty. Amen. Amen. I'm so grateful for her. She she hangs with me quite a bit. Amen. She's been with me all my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Even in the bad times. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> She's been right there. Amen. Okay, I, I want to go ahead and, and do what you have called and asked me to come over and do. But let me go to a word of prayer. Amen. Amen. Eternal Father, we come. We acknowledge your presence today. So grateful, Father, for who you are in our lives. You're such a wonderful, kind, 
a merciful and a loving God. Now, Father God, I pray now as I stand before your people, Father, I pray that you would hide me behind the old sacred cross, that they get a glimpse of you and not see me. Pray, Father God, that you speak with my mouth, Father God, think with my mind. Use me according to your precept. Now let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For, oh Lord, you are my strength mm -hmm. and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, I, I want to go into 2 Timothy, mm -hmm. the third chapter. And I'm going to pull two scriptures out of here and we're going to try to combine that into Christian education. Amen. Amen. Okay. Verse 16. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 2 Timothy, mm -hmm. the third chapter. Mm -hmm. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Mm hmm. And it's profitable for doctrine, mm -hmm. for reproof, mm -hmm. for correction, for instruction yes. in righteousness. Yes. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. 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 The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen. Amen. I, I'm going to talk to you this day, tonight, using as a subject title. The book is where it begins. The book is where it begins. Mm -hmm. And if you don't mind, I solicit your prayers. Absolutely. There was a man who had a son that wanted a unique bicycle, a custom-made bike that no other kid on the block could have. Hmm. And the father decided to go and purchase this unique custom-made bike. And when he brought it home, he took it out of the box, took the instructions and laid them to the side. And he started assembling this custom-made bike. After all, he had an idea how it should go. Mm -hmm. But he realized it's taking him a little bit longer to get it done. And when he finally got it together and put all the components together and, and he looked at the bike and he looked at the picture and realized the bike didn't look like the picture. So he realized that something's wrong here. So he decided to take the bike back and then he came back with another bike. Mm -hmm. And he took it out of the box. And this time, he took the instructions. Mm -hmm. And he looked at the instructions and he said, okay, this time, mm -hmm. I'm going to do it by the book. All right. As a matter of fact, it's where it's in the book where everything's begin. Mm -hmm. Because as Christians, as baptized believers, sometimes we get to the point in our lives when things are not working according to our plans. Mm -hmm. You may try to, to do it all out on your own mm. without getting the manual, without getting instructions, without getting the book. Sometimes we cannot do it, my brothers and sisters, on our own. We, we need some, some help. Yes. And it has come to the point sometimes in our finite minds that we realize I cannot do it without this book. I, I, I need this book and it's the book where it all begins. Yes. As a matter of fact, we're living in what some have labeled post-Christian age. Mm -hmm. Some said these are barbaric times. Mm -hmm. These are the new dark ages of the world. And the church itself is really under the onslaught of secularism, mm -hmm. waging war against all the Christians and all and all tack war against Christians trying to win their hearts and their mind. And sometimes it may seem like it's getting by. That sometimes it seems like that we just fall into that uh, secular world concept. That's why Christian education is so important. 
Because Christian education is an attitude related to God's word. It's important. It's critical that we study God's word from the perspective of the word. We can only understand life as we do it through the spectacles of the scriptures. And that's why when you look at this text, Paul can help us tonight. In this text, Paul can show us the importance of this book. And as we look at the backdrop at this text, we will be able to see how important this book really is. He had just left the church of Ephesus. And he left the church in the hands of his young protege, Timothy. Timothy had came and was running the church and the church started to grow. And how many knows when church grows, sometimes there's some problems that comes along with it. Stuff in the world had seeped into the church. And Paul had to write young Timothy, his young protege, had, had to write him and show him and instruct him how to handle the problems in the church. It started with the book. He told them, first of all, he said, now look, when you choose deacons, make sure that they know how to run their own household. Because see, if they can't run their own household, how are they going to run the church? Huh? If they cannot run the church, and they don't know how to run their own household, nobody wants a weak deacon. Hmm? Nobody wants a weak deacon. He said, now, not only that, don't be in a hurry to ordain or appoint a bishop. Because a man should desire that office. And if he's going to desire that office as a bishop, tell him to put that alcohol down. To tell him to put that, that, that bottle completely down. Because who wants a, a drunken surgeon or a drunken pilot? Because I'm at the point in my life, if someone's going to teach me about salvation, I need for him to be sober and conscious. I, I don't need nobody who's going to be out there doing this and that and trying to teach me some things. I want him to be sober and conscious. And he said, Timothy, not only that, he said, I need for you to flee from the youthful lust. Because I know you're young, Timothy. I, I, I know you, you're young. I know you, you're going to ask some you know, pretty young woman in the congregation. I, I know that. But everything that looks good to you, Timothy, may not be good for you. Hmm? And that's what he said. And he said, and not only that, Timothy, I need for you to learn how to treat the old folks. I, I, I need for you to embrace them like mother and father. Treat the young men as brothers, the young ladies as sisters. And he said, when you do all of that, I need for you to preach the word in season and out of season. Don't, don't be scared. I need for you to preach it because Timothy, you got the gift in you. Stir that gift up. You got the same gift that's in you because it was in your mama and your grandma. He said, stir it up. And then you get to this text. Then you get to this text. He says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That's saying the book is where it begins. The book. We must have saints, my brothers and sisters, who's going to do it by the book. For Christ I live, for Christ I die. It starts with the book. And, 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 and let me just show you some reason why. Let me just show you some reason why we should do it by the book. Because when you look at the author, there is none like him. When you, when, you, when, you, when, you, when you have the book in your hand, you have the mind of the author on paper. Huh? You, you, you have it right there on paper. It, it's, it's just like uh, you read in any other book. When you read The Purpose Driven Life by Rick 
reform. Yeah. You have the mind yeah. of the author yeah. on paper. Yeah. When you read living in the in between times by Dr. Pastor Ralph West, yeah. you have the mind of the author mm-hmm. on paper. Yeah. When you read experiencing God by Henry Blackaby, you have the mind of the author on paper. When you read one
know, see, when, when, when you do it by the book and you understand that it begins by the book, God will pour. Matter of fact, God will continue to pour himself all through you. He will continue to pour his word all in you. He will continue to fill you up with an overflow. And as you get filled up with that overflow, that same overflow will be so great that that thing will jump off on somebody else. But that's the way God's word will do. But to get the right overflow, you must, you got to get the right doctrine. Hmm? Somebody know what I'm talking about. You got to get the right doc. You got to get the right teaching. Yes. And the only way you can get connected yeah. is through the Word of God. Yeah. And that, that's all I can give you. That's the only way you can get connected is through the Word of God. Because the Word of God yeah. has God's authority stamped all over. It's stamped all over. It is used yes. for rebuke. Yes. And if you want to get an overflow of comparable, not only will you be connected to God, mm-hmm. but that word will also convict you too. Yes, it will. Hmm? Somebody know what I'm talking about. Yes, if you ever been convicted, everybody's hand ought to raise up. It will convict you. Yes, it will. That, that's why. That's why. That, that, that's what that's what the word will do. It will. Convict you. It'll convict you. Because wrong, my brothers and sisters, is still wrong. Right is still right. Adultery is still wrong. Same sex marriage, I'm sorry, Obama, is still wrong. Lying, stealing, cheating, backbiting, jealousy, envy, it is still wrong. Because doctrine will correct you. Yeah, yeah. Reproof will convict you. Yeah, yeah. Correction yeah. will construct you. Yeah, yeah. And instructions will complete you. Yeah. And when God gets through with you, hallelujah for the Lamb, I feel something up here now. Right, right. When God gets through with you, yeah. all of a sudden you'll be walking around looking just like this book. Yeah. Hmm? You will be looking like the book and the result of looking like the book is in verse 17 the B part of it said when you get all of this and you start looking like the book he said now you'll be thoroughly equipped for every good work Hmm? for every good work every good work means that you're going to do submission work every good work means going to do some evangelistic work. Yeah. Prison ministry. Yeah. Teaching. Yeah. Serve. Because yeah, yeah. the Bible said it's all done through the book. That's right. That's right. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Yeah. No standing in the way of sin. No seated in the seat of the scorn fear. But his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his life. Here we go. There it is. In his we meditate through his word. Christian education so important it's an acknowledgement about God's world because he created it he holds it together he rules it and we have an obligation my brothers and sisters to learn all that we can about it I'm about done now I'm ready to get out of here all that we can. We're just not simply learning about math, science, and history. We are learning about God's world. We're learning. And Christian education seek to produce competent graduates who know the world as well as the one who created it. And that's what it does. The book 
is where it begins. The book. Jesus paid a price for us to not be committed by this book. He paid the price for us for us not to be committed to grow by this book. This whole Bible is about Jesus. Because after all, Jesus is the book. He's the book. He, 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 he's the book. He came down through 42 generations. It's in the book. Stopped off at Bethlehem in Judea. Reared in Nazareth. Baptized in the Jordan. Performed miracles in a desert place. Wept over Jerusalem. Prayed at Gethsemane. They took the book and they nailed it to the cross. The book died on the cross. But they forgot something. They forgot one thing what the book says. They forgot this page in the book that says, destroy this temple. And I raise it up again in three days. Because on the third day, on the third day, while the dude was still on the roads, on the third day, Because the book is where it begins. God bless you. God keep you. Is our prayer. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's so good to be here. Amen. It's a little warm right here. It's a little little warm right here. Amen. We praise God. Amen. That this is a school by the book. Amen. Amen. And we have students here trying to learn more about the book. Amen. That when they leave this place, amen, they will go out and do ministry by the book. Amen. And then that when they're out doing ministry by the book, amen, they're going to be sharing about the book. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen, Pastor Drew. Yes, amen. For come sharing us. Amen. That it all begins with the book. Praise his holy name. Amen. Again, we want to thank, amen, again, Pastor Drew for yielding himself to the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. And come and sharing here with the Western students and our friends. And we just praise God for him. Uh, I, I want to uh, recognize all these pastors that have come and to, to come and share with Pastor Drew and with our, our, our school on this evening. I'd like for you all to stand because you do our, our hearts so warm. All the pastors that have come to share with us tonight. Why don't you stand, students and Amen. All the pastors here, if you look around and see, amen. Amen. We, we have, amen, graduates, amen, that are pastoring and doing uh, a, a great job to come back and to share with us. Uh, let me say this just so that I can plant this in the spirit so that uh, when we leave this place, you know to carry on. But we have uh, instituted our three lectures about uh, in 2004, we have for a emphasis in missions, uh, our Carolyn Ely lecture that's in October. Uh, in February, uh, with an emphasis in Christian education, we have the John W. Williams lecture. Uh, and then in March, with an emphasis in evangelism, we have the I.H. Henderson senior and junior lecture. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I, I want